This video presentation is made possible by Brewster Services Group. Order before we start, I need to read this notice of electronic meeting access and information. To ensure government operations continue to function openly and transparently during the COVID-19 emergency, while taking measures to protect the health and safety of citizens and government officials, Governor Bill Lee issued Executive Order Number 16 on March the 20th of this year, which allows governing bodies to conduct essential business by electronic means. Electronic meeting access and information is available online at the City of Loudon TN.org website. And I think we have a few that are logged on uh, with Zoom tonight. So we're glad to have you guys that's logged on there as well. Uh, we have two special guests. Um, our invocation will be led by Reverend Daniel Fortman from Valley View Free Will Baptist Church, and our Pledge of Allegiance to the flag will be led by Lieutenant Colonel Jim DeZuti from the United States Army's veteran from the Army. So if you could stand with us, please. Brother Fortman, if you lead us in our invocation. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, so much for your goodness, Lord, your grace and your mercy. We are thankful, Lord, for the opportunity to come to this meeting, Lord, and be about the business of the city of Loudoun. And Lord, we thank you, Father, for uh, each and every one of the leaders that are here represented. Uh, Lord, we pray, Father, that uh, you would bless each and every leader here. Lord, bless the firemen, bless the policemen. Lord, bless the, the city council, Lord, as they stand. Uh, to do business tonight. Father, we pray, Lord, that you give them discernment and wisdom uh, and that their, their sayings and their doings would be ones of goodwill, Lord, and charity. Father, that they would love uh, the people of Loudoun as they so do and so act, Lord, that we would, be, uh, we would bring glory to you. And Father, we just thank you for this opportunity. We praise you. Uh, Lord, we ask that you would be in the midst of this meeting. Lord, in everything that we do and say, go to glorify your son, Jesus Christ. And it's in his name we do pray. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. service to our community and um, Jim DeZuti for your service to our country. Thank you. Let's do a roll call of attendance, please. Mayor Harris? Here. Vice Mayor Dixon? Here. Councilmember Bivens? Here. Councilmember Brewster? Here. Councilmember James? Here. All okay, thank you. I'll begin our meeting with uh, our mayor's welcome. I want to wish you good evening tonight and thanks for coming to the monthly meeting of the Loudoun City Council. My name is Mayor Jeff Harrison. On behalf of the council and the staff, I want to welcome you here tonight. Tennessee law gives every Tennessean the right to attend city council meetings and to observe how the government's doing business. We appreciate that each of you have taken time from your own personal schedules to be here tonight and see how your city government works. You should have a copy of tonight's agenda. If you do not have one, you can pick one up at the podium. Uh, this agenda is your guide to the topics that we're going to discuss tonight. In order to conduct efficient business-like meetings, the council has adopted specific rules to follow. These rules are designed to keep the meeting moving, assure that all points of view are heard and considered, and also to provide for common courtesy. In a few minutes, we'll come to the place on the agenda that's entitled Citizens Input, where anyone who's signed in to speak is encouraged to do so. We do ask that you wait until you've been recognized before you speak. After being recognized, please approach the podium to address the council and observe three simple rules. At the beginning of the presentation, please state your name for the records. Please address all your questions to the mayor as the chairman. And please avoid the use of improper language, profanity, or any other inappropriate conduct. Once this portion of the meeting is over, the council will proceed with the remainder of the agenda and you're welcome to stay and observe, but be advised that public comments may be limited. We ask that everyone remember we're doing the people's business here tonight and it's a very important responsibility that we all share. Please help us to do this business by observing the rules we've established for our meetings. And again, we want to welcome you to the Loudoun City Council meeting. We're glad you're here tonight. 
before we adopt the agenda, um, we have had a request from Dr. Guider to uh, be added to the agenda. Uh, we'll know if anyone has a problem with that. Uh, we can add him to the agenda right after. Um, we'll, we'll put him right in next, if, if that's okay with everybody on the council. Make a motion we add him. Okay, I have a motion to add him. I have a second. Okay. With that change, is there any other changes to the agenda that before we adopt it? If not, I'll ask a motion to adopt the agenda. I have a motion. Okay, thank you. Have a second? A second. Okay, we have a motion and a second to adopt the agenda for tonight. And we will begin with uh, Dr. Guider, who's the chairman of the Recreation Advisory Committee. He would like to address the council on the feasibility of the recreation slash community center. So, Dr. Guider, we recognize you. Go ahead and speak.
for the work that you put into it and the committee. Does council have any comments or questions for Dr. Guider? Or for Mark? Mark is in the room. Mark Carroll. Also, Councilman Brewster's on the Recreational Advisory Committee. Mark, Mark, you want to add anything? Please. I think you're fine. I think you're everything we've talked about. I would like to put it back on the board. Hammer it out. Okay. Councilman Brewster's requested it be put back on the workshop for next month for Council to address it again. Make it to is that okay with everyone? I think that's our appropriate route. Okay. Johnny, you okay with that? I'm fine. And Tim? Yeah. Okay, Dr. Guy, it'll be on the agenda for next month's workshop to hammer out the details. We had one person sign in, I think, uh, guest I invited, Jim Dizzuti. So, Jim, if you could come and uh, he has a, a real good project going on, I think everybody needs to be aware of. He came and spoke to our Rotary Club and asked him to come here and share this information with the general public. Thank you, Mayor Harris. And thank you all for letting me speak to you tonight. <clears throat> I'm here representing our place, which will be a new uh, nonprofit adult day center for Loudoun and Monroe counties. It's going to be located off of Highway 444 and 72 at the intersections in front of Food City. Our mission is going to be to provide a program of activities for those that have Alzheimer's and dementia and allow free time for their caregivers. And I'm going to give you some statistics as to why we need this center. You mean food line, right? What did I say, food city? Yeah, it's a little That's different. across the street. Yeah, <laughs> it's so far. other way. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Maybe because I'm looking at it. Yeah, but, any, but anyways, um, if you look at Loudoun County, our population is a little north of 56,000 people. 26.4% of our population is over the age of 65. That means there's about 14,000 people here in Loudoun County that are over the age of 65. The American Alzheimer Association states that 15% of all people between the ages of 16, I'm sorry, 65 and 74 have either dementia or Alzheimer. And Alzheimer's is the biggest part of uh, the dementia, the disease. It's about, it accounts for about 80% of those people that, that have the issue. And then if you look at it from 74 to 85, that jumps to 44% of those individuals. So if you look here at Loudoun County and take an average, that means there's 3,600 of our citizens that are impacted by one stage or another of Alzheimer's. But it's even bigger than that because most of our citizens, because there isn't uh, a program for them here in Loudoun County, uh, from the time they're diagnosed until they go to long-term care, it falls on their dependents or their spouse, a child, someone to take care of them. And it's a 24-hour, seven-day-a-week pro problem. So that means there's approximately 7,200 people here in the county that are impacted by this disease. And that's what will come into play because we'll be able to provide a program for these individuals that will allow them uh, to prosper. And I actually talked with someone today that's going to CAGE, which is the only other facility in our area, and that's on the other side of Pellissippi Parkway in, in Knoxville. Um, and he told me that his wife has maintained and made great progress with the program that he's in. The issue for the caregiver is almost as big as the person with a disease because, uh, again, using the American Alzheimer Association statistics, 25% of those caregivers pass away before the person with a disease because of the stress that they're under because of that constant care that's out there. What I'd like to do next is just tell you a little bit about the facility, where we're at, uh, both from uh, design, uh, construction, and uh, fundraising standpoint. So I already told you where it's going to be located. It's going to be 2,200 square feet. We hope to break ground the 1st of January. Um, right, right 
right now we have six different contractors that have bid. We put it back out for bid because the estimates came in way above our expectation. Our fundraising goal is $620,000 to open the building. We believe we can get it built for around 630. The bids have been north of $750,000, but we believe the last two contractors will uh, come in a little more online. To date, we've raised, uh, have actually in a bank account since May, $246,000. I expect to be around $450,000 by the end of the year. We're applying for a line of credit. We put our five-year budget together and finance plan. Uh, we plan to finance about $270,000 of this. The nice thing about the center is, again, we're a nonprofit, but if we have 11 people in the building on a day in and day out basis will break even. The building will be built to house between 20 and 25, so we'll be able to self-fund ourselves. Uh, that's the nice thing about this. And then hopefully in partnership with the senior centers in Loudoun County and Monroe, help them out a little bit with what they need. Uh, but we're very excited. Uh, tonight's purpose was just to let you know about us and that we're coming. And uh, we're doing everything we can in our power to make this happen for our city and our county. Thanks, Jeff. Any Jim, questions I can Jim, answer? Jim, I have a question for Jim. I want to thank you all for coming to our community. This is, this is a great program. And something that's much needed here. Thank you. Well, we, we live here, and this is a one-of-a-kind facility. So, And I've been here 20 years, so I really know what we need out here. And I think, too, we need to, it's important to get the word out. This is not just a federal village saying this is, this is for the county community in Loudoun County. Right. Our, County. Ch our charter doesn't mention Teleco Village. Yeah. Our charter says Loudoun and community. Mm -hmm. Loudoun and Monroe counties, period. How will the system work? ASE and... I'm sorry. How, how's your system going to work? Okay. As far well, as the center, the center will be open Monday through Friday from 9.30 to 4.30. Uh, have to be physician recommended. And right now we have a committee that's working on all the licensing and the classrooms and how we're going to prioritize who gets in versus others because I really believe the need's going to be bigger than what we are. And I know I gave each of you a pamphlet up there. And if you look at the left side of the building, it looks like there's a porch out there. Uh, we have the capability of expanding it to house 50 people a day. And I think that's really what we're going to end in about a year. But we definitely have to have a system to prioritize who gets in because I know the need that's out there right now. Approximately what would be a, a, an eight hour fee for? We're looking at, uh, the national average is $60 a day. We're trying to get in less than that. Now what we are gonna offer are scholarships to help those people in need that can't afford that. And again, we have to put together what the criteria and stuff, and Cades is our, our mentor for this project, so we'll probably borrow what they're doing. But I already had a church in our area give me $25,000 for those scholarships. So I don't want to focus on raising money for scholarships. I've got to get the facility built first. So there, it will be based on need. Other questions? So you're basically looking for donations, is that? Um, I can take all the help I can get. I mean, that's, I mean. Right, I'm not asking for reason. donations tonight. I'm just making yeah. sure everybody yeah, is aware of us. Just to get the word out and, and I'd like just to come and educate. Yeah, and I'd like to come back in a few months, maybe after the first of the year, tell you where we are with construction and that kind of stuff and just keep you in the loop. But anything you can do to help us getting the word out, we're certainly going to need volunteers once we get set up. Uh, the staff right now will be a full-time director who we believe we have identified, a part-time an assistant director and a part-time individual and 24 volunteers on staff at any given time. And all that is people have to be trained and licensed and everything else. They just can't work there. I appreciate you getting the word out. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Any other questions? Hey, thanks, Jim. You're welcome. Thank you. Okay, next item on the agenda is the approval of the minutes for the regular meeting, August 24th, 2020. Mayor, I reviewed the minutes with uh, Mr. Ford, and I recommend that they be approved. Okay, so I have a motion to approve the minutes. I'll make a motion. And Councilman second. James, second by Councilmember Dixon. Any questions? Okay, all those approve the minutes, say aye. Aye. 
No. If you don't approve, say no. Motion carries. Okay, the next item is the ordinance on second reading. We had the public hearing. This is to amend the 2020-2021 fiscal year budget. And as I did mention, uh, they may have to be uh, have to be amended to, to the revised quote based on item number six on our agenda. Oh, I didn't. Let me. Sorry. We'll do the fuel bid. That's from looking at two different sheets. Okay, we have the fuel bid, which was uh, the purchase of fuel for September 15th. Uh, Petroleum Traders Corporation for the projected amount of $9,846.05. That converts to unleaded gasoline at $1.3039 and low sulfur undyed diesel at $1.1794. Do have a motion to approve the fuel bid? I'll make a motion. Thank you. Have a second? Have a second. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Thank you, Councilmember Bivens, for keeping me straight there. Now we'll go to the ordinance on second reading for the fiscal year 2020 2021 fiscal year budget. You can see the it's the state grant that's announced the, in late June 2020 for the amount of $158,000. This will be transferred and appropriate to public safety equipment capital to purchase the proposed siren system. That is item number six on our agenda. And also appropriates an additional $400,000 from the Courthouse Square grant fund balance to other downtown improvements such as a proposed additional parking and or lighting projects. We have a motion to approve ordinance on second reading. I have a second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Is there any discussion? Any questions about the revised quote or anything like that that we talked about? Okay, roll call vote, please. Okay, Mayor, we did clarify that the amount of public safety. Yes. Okay. Up to $158,000. $158,000, yes. item is ordinance on first reading amending the zoning map of the city of Loudoun, Tennessee pursuant to 13-7-203 and 13-7-204 of Tennessee code annotated to rezone property located on Mulberry Street tax map 041H group F parcels 001, 002, and 003 from P1 professional and civic district with the H1 historic overlay district to C2 highway business district with the historic overlay district and the Loudoun Regional Planning Commission recommends this approval of the rezoning request which has been made by the property owners. Do I have a motion to approve this on first reading? I move to approve it. Okay, we have a motion to approve on first reading. Do I have a second? I'll second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Do we know what's going in? We do not at this time. Any other, any other questions? And as you can see from the map that was included, pretty much everything around there is how it's zoned. So you can see how, how it fits. Okay, any discussion? Okay, we'll ask for a roll call vote. Councilmember James? Aye. Councilmember Dixon? Aye. Councilmember Bivens? Aye. Councilmember Brewster? Aye. Mayor Harris? Aye. So we need a public hearing? Uh, may I suggest October 26th at 625? Okay. Next item on the agenda is a resolution which is approving the PNC Equipment Finance LLC resolution and it's in connection with the purpose of the new fire truck and uh, our prior resolution authorizing the payment plan with the truck manufacturer. This just adds the truck manufacturer's finance company. I think that's correct, isn't it, Manager Ross? Yes, so. I, I apologize. I'll take a blank for this. Our, the, the resolution you passed last month was very specific, uh, speaking to the, the manufacturer. Uh, probably could have used more general 
language. The language in this resolution uh, adds the finance company uh, at the request of the manufacturer and the finance company. And you've seen that in your packet. So we have a motion to approve this resolution. I make a motion. Okay, we have a motion to approve the equipment finance resolution. Do we have a second? I'll second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? No. Okay, motion carries. Then we have approving the purchase of fire department equipment through grant funding of Department of Homeland Security. Uh, this was discussed at our workshop, which was the exhaust delivery innovation at a cost of $67,430. This grant that was funded with the city, the city's cost would not exceed $3,333.33. This was discussed at the, the workshop. I think this is something the chief has tried to get for several years and yes, sir. was finally successful. Make a motion. Okay, we have a motion to approve it. Do we have a second? I'll second. Okay, any questions from Chief Brubaker or Manager Ross? Or? Okay, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? No. Motion carries. Next item is authorizing the installation of walk, walking trail lighting at Loudon Municipal Park. Um, this resolution authorizes the installation of walking trail lighting at Loudon Municipal Park by Piney Ditching Company at a cost of $24,600. Director Harold discussed this at the workshop and this is in your budget, correct? That's correct. So anything you need to, anything changed since the workshop? No. Mark? Okay. Okay, we have a motion to authorize the installation to Piney Ditching Company at a cost of $24,600. Do we have a second? I'll second. Okay, second by Councilmember Dixon. Any questions? Okay, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? No. Okay, that motion carries. Uh, next item is approving an agreement with uh, Tennessee Department of Transportation for the construction and maintenance of an industrial highway. Um, this resolution will initiate TDOT's involvement in the construction of a new intersection at the entrance of Sugar Limb Industrial Park, which is in conjunction with the planned construction of a new Malibu boat manufacturing facility on the other side of Highway 11. Um, EDA Director Qualls explained this at our workshop. Uh, under this program, it's the local responsibility will be limited to the utility relocation. Manager Ross, you have anything to add to yeah, that? Here in the piece we've been talking with this is amongst the utility department heads. Um, it's actually an LCUB territory. It's the, it's, it's the bottom edge, edge of their system. So it's not necessarily as much relocation. It is um, extension of our own system onto this new, new property that this council recently annexed into the city. Mm -hmm. um, but um, we'll take that on as, a, as an economic development project, negotiate um, with the economic development client uh, in, in terms of uh, construction. So we'll, we'll work that out along the way. TDOT has a program. Uh, this is a, this is a state route. TDOT has a program to aid uh, new manufacturing, investment, and jobs. Uh, they're just asking for a resolution from this body uh, to kick off the process and, uh, and, and and trigger that program. So we can move forward. Okay, do we have a motion to approve this agreement with TDOT? I'll make a motion when you approve this. Okay, we have a motion. Do we have a second? Second motion. Okay, we have a second. Any questions? We have, I think Jack Qualls was on the Zoom call. Is he still there, Nicole? If anybody has a question? He is. Okay, does anybody have a question for Director Qualls? There's absolutely no cost to the city, right? Oh, I need There are absolutely no cost to the city on this project. I think when we agreed to annex that, Malibu uh, agreed to pay for the utilities. I checked my minutes on that. Jack, 
question? Discussion? Okay, we have a motion and a second to approve it. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? No? Okay. Next one is approving coordination with Tennessee Department of Transportation for an Interstate 75 Exit 72 Traffic Signal Improvements. Uh, this resolution will initiate TDOT's involvement in the construction of traffic signalization at Exit 72 off of I-75 here in Loudoun. This is going to be under their Spot Safety Program project. This was something we talked about that got pushed back. Um, and now it's back on uh, TDOT's list and responsibility of the city is $60,000. What's the time frame on that, Jack? So this is the first step approving the resolution to move forward. Oh, is, our, is our original resolution still not good because we voted on this a year ago? Yep. It's fine. Uh, and there were some distractions a year ago. I know we considered this and discussed it at length at a workshop, but it just never was presented to council in the form of a resolution. I apologize for that. This would just be a housekeeping thing just to, you know, Get it on, on record now. Thank you. Okay, do we have a motion? I'll make a motion. Okay, we have a motion. Do we have a second? I'll second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Any other questions for Manager Ross or Director Qualls? All those in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? No. Okay, motion carries. Next item, item six, is authorizing the purchase and installation of outdoor warning system from Mobile Communications America. This resolution will authorize the purchase and installation of an outdoor warning system from Mobile Communication America at a cost of 158-222-32. This has like been discussed just a little bit. Okay. How about our motion to second? Yeah, if we have a motion and a second, then we'll, we can discuss it. Okay. Okay, we have a motion. Do we have a second? second? Okay, we have a motion and a second to authorize this purchase. Uh, Vice Mayor Dixon. Yep. Um, I, I'm not against this at all, but I would like to. I don't understand why we didn't start with it. I think we need to look into the fact that we can get some grants uh, to help the cost of this. Uh, it is a grant paying for it. Well, not the type of grant that I'm speaking about. Uh, uh, this grant comes from uh, the Kobe, that is where this comes from. I think there's a grant out there that we can possibly get somewhere that, that would help us in the purchasing situation. Uh, well, Tyson, I emailed me, there's a grant in February that we could apply for. A CDBG grant? Yeah. Uh, I, 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 I think we need to hold off until we see if we can get that. But, It's a 60-40, it's a 60-40. Anything that would help us, uh, instead of us having to pay the full price. According to Manager Ross's email, it would, it would be covered under CDBG grant. It would qualify. Well, we know how the grant process works. We could apply for it in February. In two years, we could get it. It don't happen quick. And you got, when you do them state grants, you know, you, you'll have to hire an engineer. You have to go through all that process. And this is a simple fix, in my opinion. And I, I do, I would amend the motion that after they're installed, if everybody in Loudoun can't hear them, they need to move them to where they can. We, we're not going to pay for it unless they work. I think that's very important because no matter what they cost, if they don't do the job, they fail, period, and we wasted our money. So uh, if they say they can relocate them, modify them, whatever, because we don't know. I mean, we, we've not heard them. The new locations, they say, is what will work. But at the same time, until they're 
know. We won't know. We just don't pay till it's working. I mean, I just, I just, I, I'm, that's the thing that I would want to monitor more, more closely than how we're going to pay for it, really. She's here. Anybody's got any questions? Well, like I said, I don't think that the test was as successful no, as what we flaw. thought. And, and, well, that, that, and, that, and that raised a lot of eyebrows. It, it did. Right. A, yeah. lot, a lot of doubters in this town. But a lot of doubters. But this was at 30% and right. it was always around. Right. So that's, I mean, that's what it meant to sound over the whole city. Yeah. Okay. Even the Good evening, Council. Good evening, Mayor. Yes, in regards to the test, um, it, it was at 30% and at ground level. So uh, it was a different siren. So we, we talked, we addressed that at the workshop uh, two weeks ago. A different siren system on how it oscillates, um, different model altogether. So the real purpose of that demonstration was never intended to uh, distribute sound quality or, or coverage. Um, we can't do that with this particular demo. Nor do we have a demo uh, at this at the level that would that would go citywide that we recommend on the quote. Uh, we can guarantee that the coverage, though, and certainly that's that's a fair um, request to ensure that the four siren system would cover what we say we we say it will cover on the coverage map being 70 decibels within that zone. Outside of that zone, it will still be audible, less than 70 decibels. I mean, I have some of the same concerns Vice Mayor Dixon brought up. I mean, I'm I'm not against a warning system of any kind. Um, as far as I know, this was the only one that was brought to our attention as far as, a, I think, Chief Webb brought up a hyper-reach, I think, early on as an option. But I don't know if there's other options looked at, but this is the only one that was brought to council. He looked into several options. Um, the reliability of this one going through the... Yes, going through Wheeling, their alert system, it takes the liability off of the city to do the alerts. And that was one of the pluses to this that really drew him to this option. And he did look into others as well. Did we look into like notifications through cell phones or through mobile that, devices or already set up through the county? That, that would be set up with this system. They have that option as well. The reverse on the reverse mm -hmm. one, yeah. I just know it's a lot of money for us to pay out <coughs> when we already have <coughs> excuse me, this notification. And I mean there's other grants out there we get to help us offset this cost. That, that, that's my concern. I mean, I guess the hyper reach is available now, but it's, but it's through the county, I guess. Is that what you're implying that, you know, we already have that available with that? We do have some availability, like what Tim was talking about, what you're talking about, Tim. But uh, that, that, that overall cost could, could help us pay for this if we had some other grants, which is available out there that I think we could get. Mm -hmm. Ross. Make sure I'm picking up what you're putting down. Councilmember Dixon uh, would like to delay this vote and do some further fundraising. I think that's his desire. Isn't it? Right. Councilmember Brewster would like to proceed with this vote so long as the resolution would be amended to state that the purchase agreement must include uh, a warranty and or performance guarantee. Yes. So that, that was to amend your motion. Right, with that. Do you understand what we're, 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 we're saying? If it don't work, we're not going to pay for it. Yes. Okay. So then, uh, Vice Mayor Dixon, you didn't make a motion for that. That's just your request to delay the... Yeah, right. 
You've got one motion on the floor. Right, that's what we're going to deal with now. Right. Any other questions? So the motion on the floor is to approve purchase with the performance warranty attached. Chris, right? That's right. doable, right? That's right. From, I obviously haven't seen the final contract. I don't think that's been prepared yet. But based on what Representative said, is that the coverage map that we have put up on the screens, we have that. As long as there's 70 decibels within those yellow zones, that's what they're willing to, to guarantee. Exactly. Within the red zone. Within the red zone. Yeah, yellow zones to pick what the demo was. I see. So within the red zones, 70 decibels will be registered. Yes. Okay. Everybody clear with that? Okay, I guess we better probably take a roll call vote. Councilmember Biggins? Aye. Councilmember Brewster? Aye. Councilmember Dixon? No. Councilmember James? Aye. Mayor Harris? I would, I think I'm going to, I don't have a clear decision in my mind which way to go on this, uh, so I'm going to abstain. So motion passes three to one. Okay, next item, approving content license agreement with Gremlins Consulting LLC. This resolution will authorize Gremlins Consulting LLC, which uh, Mitch Miller's here tonight, to make use of certain marketing content owned by the city, currently housed at the WeLoveLoudon.com web address to be used by Gremlins Consulting LLC on a separate website via content license agreement. This agreement is revocable by the city at any time. So, Mr. Miller's here. If there's any questions, he covered it, I think, pretty well at the workshop. Uh, this is basically no cost to the city. This is just giving him the rights to use that. I make a motion. Okay, we have a motion on the floor. Do we have a second? I'll second. Motion. We have a motion and second. Any discussion? Any questions for Mr. Miller or Manager Ross or Attorney Fry? Okay, all those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? No. Motion carries. Okay, I do have one appointment uh, to make. As we mentioned at the workshop, I mentioned that the Loudoun County Visitors Bureau Board of Directors uh, has a needs a replacement there, and Councilmember Brewster has agreed to serve in that uh, role. So uh, that that's my appointment. It doesn't need a, a vote by council, but just so you know, I want to thank Councilman Brewster for agreeing to do that. He's got to get up early one day a week. <laughs> or get them to change the time. <laughs> Thank you, Councilman Bruce, for agreeing to do that. <laughs> yeah, won't you do that? Um, we'll go now to our department reports, and uh, we'll start with Fire Chief Brew Baker. Nothing to report. Okay. Uh, Jason, you have anything? No, sir. Okay. Uh, Director Harrell. Yes. Superintendent Garen, that uh, they were so satisfied with using the Peyton Lyle Amphitheater that they are planning to use it again in May, May 14th and 15th for Greenback graduation and Loudon High School graduation again. So we're very excited about that. We, we were um, uh, honored to have them. They were good, uh, good folks. We had some good advertisement with uh, people that came through, and a lot of people didn't know that the park existed along the amphitheater. So we're excited about that.
park systems or a desired location and it had to be a park location. Dr. Guider, um, I thought he might have time to bring that up tonight as well, but I think he was considering with the other report. So I'll get you some more information on that and, and talk to uh, my boss manager, Ross, about that. But I think that's something we ought to consider is, uh, is in the future having a replacement program. Okay. Uh, we're working on our Christmas lights. Uh, we just recently, with uh, help of two of the staff members here tonight, we've done all the work probably of putting together a program to replace everything that we currently have uh, with LED bulbs. It's a cost of about $9,000, and we're excited. Uh, that's, uh, Jeff can tell you, and Brooke as well, that it's a very time-consuming project to go through and test all those bulbs, make sure that they're working, make sure that they don't burst when we put them up, the utilities puts them up on the pole, and then once they get on the pole, going back and servicing them. LEDs help us with that, and we hope that we have a lot less failures, but we do, uh, we do, we have ordered the bulbs. Uh, Manager Ross and I have talked about that, and the bulbs should be getting here, and uh, you should see things going up mid-October, and I always like to explain this to council every year, to get all of our fixtures up and over 100,000 twinkling lights up by the week before Thanksgiving. It, we start the first week of October, and I mean, the whole staff, works uh, viciously, I guess you could say, to get these uh, lights and trees and things up. So we're excited about that. Um, one other thing is uh, uh, the Christmas parade this year, we get together as a staff and we try to determine who would be the uh, best Grand Marshal for the Christmas parade. And uh, I think in the past years, we've always came up with some real good ideas. And this year, we discussed having the uh, Loudoun County the entire county school systems uh, represented by their teachers. We've had the children, we've had the football team, baseball team, softball team, all those things. But the teachers are going above and beyond the call of duty now as a, as a teacher. And so we are currently preparing a letter to send to all the principals and the staffs of uh, each school that is in the county. And they will prepare a float uh, or uh, maybe just march in the parade, but they're all welcome from each end of the county. So we hope we have a good participation with that. Uh, last but not least is the planners that uh, we put up downtown. We've had nothing but great comments on them. They have, uh, they've worked out pretty well. It's took a lot of time. Once again, I look at Jeff back there. We spent about 10 to 12 hours a week uh, one man watering those plants, but they've been beautiful. And uh, we're slowly going to start taking those down and replacing those with Christmas bulbs. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Jeff, thank y'all for y'all the work you did on that, and I think the fall decorations look well too. If you look at the LMP Park, the entrance to the park, and uh, coming off the bridge, the fall decorations look really good. Chief Webb, real quick, Director Harold mentioned Christmas lights, reminded me that uh, start on the Monday, October the fifth. Children's Christmas fun with a with a golf tournament at Wind River. Uh, anybody would like to participate in, in that? Uh, could uh, contact uh, Officer Marty Ward. He's the chairman of that committee. And then, uh, of course, in November we'll be doing the turkey shoots again. So a workshop. I'll get back with you with specific dates on that because I'll need the city council to you know do what we always do every year and pass an ordinance that allows the discharge of firearms in the city limits on those days. Okay. Chief. Director Curtis. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Um, earlier I passed out some information about the city's revenue receipts through the month of August compared to last year, and this gives you an indication of how we're doing with the COVID situation. And the good news is for Loudon, we're holding strong, and we, in fact, we've seen some growth in several line items. Our personal real estate taxes are up.
Yeah. So, right along with utility bills, just all came at one time, you know. <laughs> yeah. We did have some questions as to where they were, and because I think the counties were a few uh, were a week or so ahead of us, but there was an issue with the uh, one of the one of the mortgage company files that we had to work through. Thank you for this report because I don't know how council you may get questions. I know I do sometime of what our situation is with COVID and you know how has it affected our tax base and things like that. So you have these numbers in front of you, and we're really done doing pretty well. And with our our budget for this year, we wanted to be very conservative, and our all of our debt holders, our bondholders, they want to hear that they want to hear that we're conservative with our budget. Um, so we held all of our revenues for this year flat. And you see from the report that we've had some actual growth, which mm -hmm. is great news. Thank you for that. Any questions for Nicole? Okay, I think that's all the department reports that I saw. Uh, council member reports. I know um, Council Member Bivens has a special meeting coming up tomorrow night. I do, yes. Um, they're going to be discussing the uh, new amendment uh, to the contract with Santec at the moment. Uh, that'll be discussed tomorrow night. I think all the council, Mayor, mm -hmm. uh, Mr. Ross, uh, we're all invited to it. Um, I hope that you all can attend. Uh, that would help me. I've got your support on a, on a vote one way or the other. Mm -hmm. I appreciate that. You all can Anything else? Okay. Vice Mayor Dixon, you have a council member report, committee report? Uh, on the utility board side, uh, we had a meeting today and uh, everything was finalized today about the uh, water sales agreement with Teleco Village. Uh, we have to commend the, the people that was involved in all this. It took months and months and months and a year or two to, to get all this done. Chairman Campbell and uh, Andrew Ross, and our attorney Fry, and a lot of other people was involved in that. And it took a long time, to, but uh, now that uh, they've got that situation fixed, uh, the water supply of Telco Village will be going, they'll be getting more water and we'll be getting more money. So that's, uh, that's the way that's going to work. Um, we had nothing on the, uh, uh, our, uh, on the mind for planning. Planning. planning commission. We had nothing on there. We had no meeting. Uh, so, uh, that's all I had. Okay. And along with that, on uh, the water agreement with Teleco Village. Um, I also want to thank the utility board and yeah. all those that put in work towards that. And I know uh, when we brought Manager Ross in, that was one of his main objectives was to fix that agreement. And he diligently has, has pushed forward with that. And Manager Ross, I want to say I appreciate your work on that. It was not an easy task. Uh, no one, as Chairman Campbell mentioned in the utility board meeting, no one was happy with that contract. We were not um, we were stuck with it, and um, it, it took a lot of work getting it to where it is today. And I think it's something we can live with now. That's it's it's going to do well for our ratepayers. And uh, so, thank you, Ty, for your work on that, and all those that help. Councilmember James, do you have anything to report? No, I've got a, I, just a question. Mm -hmm. Where where are we at on Queen Road as far as the commencement date? I mean, does anyone know? Or they I think it's still, uh, oh, Jack's still on. I think the plan was still to, he was still hoping to, to be this fall start work. You know, there was a budget shortfall that we had to get more money. Uh, but I think that's been worked out. Manager Ross, you have any other updates? Then? Yeah, uh, Mr. Qualls knows TDOT and the processes as well as anyone. He predicted sometime between October and, and December for us to receive a notice to proceed. Uh, we, we have not uh, received that yet, uh, but we have been working diligently to, to clear the path for TDOT, TDOT to begin the project. Um, we've already uh, activated uh, electric line uh, relocation, and we're in the process of, of moving some some water lines and other underground piping uh, to facilitate that project. So we'll have that taken care of to not be holding them up. Very good. 
in the process of selecting an engineer. There was been activity on it in selecting an engineer for the next phase. The TDOT requires a, re a review engineer um, to, to be um, to be to be retained on, on all its projects, and we we, we bid that out and and and, and selected. Oh, that was uh, CTI is, is, is the name of that firm. So that's in place. We're just um, doing everything we can on our end to uh, to keep things moving forward and get out of the way. Since we have an engineer, we could use him now. Now it has to be on a TDOT certified list, and these are consulting firms. Okay. okay. Anything else, John? No. Nope. Good. Okay. Council Member Brewster, while it's on my mind, Nicole, do you know how much we're paying the community channel a year? Roughly. $500, And what are we supposed to be getting for that service? We have a reporting about the council services are fiscal agents as well. We serve as a fiscal agent for their funds as well. So are, are they actually doing it? Are we getting what we paid for? The video recordings? You, they want the room, so. We can put it on workshop. Chip Land, I don't know if you agree. Hey, there's more people watch our meetings through WLNT radio. To the website. Yeah. yeah. And I don't, maybe we need to revoke their money. And we could help WLNT like get cordless mics and we can hear it all these wires. Do you understand what I'm trying to say? I do understand. I, I do want to say that um, the cable TV folks approached us and they several months ago about installing a, a permanent camera that would always be in this uh, room that they could operate remotely. And that introduced some concerns because we would not have control of that. So right. we could, you know, log in and access that camera and support anything at any given time. For a public meeting, that's great, but this is a multi-use room, so that did not work. Well, I think they were, they're, they're just replaying it, aren't they? Yeah, I think, I think that may have been the time that they changed in how they come and record our, our meetings when we did not accept the remote camera operation. I, I do want to make you aware of that. I don't, I don't remember seeing them here over two or three times, if that many, right. in two years. Mm -hmm. They were down at the old city hall more than they've been yeah. out here. Yeah. Yeah. The, the cable board and, and its recording duties, it, it went COVID quiet and, um, and it was pretty much replaced by Zoom during the governor's executive order. Um, the cable board itself is a, is a creature of the cable industry. And uh, it, its funding comes from cable subscriptions uh, that, are, that, are, that are entered into here in Lyon County. Those are constantly dwindling as people continue to, to cut the cord. And um, it's, it's, it will, I, I don't have a crystal ball, I can't con predict the future, but I, I think c cable subscriptions will continue to decline. Mm -hmm. If I'm hearing you correctly, you want this only in October agenda. You'd like to put that on yes, the agenda? Yes, I would. Okay. So we can put that on the workshop agenda for October? Okay. Anything else? No. Okay, closing comments. We have, I have some uh, anniversaries here. We've got quite a few. Uh, I think around nine with the city and nine with the utilities. Andy Lawson from Public Works, he had one year, and Scott Gagley, Loudon Fire Department, one year, and I think we just swore him in on 9 11. Kenny Guider, Public Works Department, two years. Brooke Millsaps, two years. Thank you, Brooke. Uh, Luke Martin, Loudon Fire Department, three years. Jason Bivens, Public Works Department, 14 years. Ramey Lyle, Public uh, uh, Parks and Rec, 17 years. Bill Evans, Loudon Police Department, 22 years. And Bobby Lankford, 23 years, Loudon Police Department. And with the, seat, with the utilities, we had Melissa Huskin in accounting. I think she's had two years this month. Elizabeth Bradshaw, customer service, six years. Adam Watson, electric department, 13 years. Jason Ward, the water department, 14. Jeff Franks, water department, 14 years. Wayne Kettner, he's here tonight. Thank you, Wayne, for 14 years of service. We David Ficke. Like yeah. <laughs> 
I ain't going to say nothing about that. <laughs> David Fickey, gas department, 25 years. Greg Hensley, customer service, 34 years. And the old timer is John Davis, director of the gas, water, and sewer department with a whopping 39 years. You know, uh, that's a testament to line utilities, their board, and the staff. Um, we also had one retiree. He was on the screen a few minutes ago, uh, Wendell Curtis from Parks and Rec Department. He retired with 21 years of service and we want to wish Wendell well. And I just think it's important that we, if you see these folks, just uh, tell them you appreciate their sticking with us and they're working and the efforts that they put forth to make our city and our uh, utilities a better place to work. So, any other closing comments? From yeah, I've got some birthdays. Okay. <clears throat> for the month of September, uh, city and utilities. The city employees, the uh, police department, Benny Hauser, and uh, back from him now, this Kristen, whatever her name is. Who is that? C O K O S T R Z E C H. Kristen Kostrecka. Kostrecka. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Scott Gagley, uh, Chris Lawson, uh, Luther E. Walton, Jr., and the Public Works is Larry Jenkins, Recreation Department, Jeff Trout, and the Utilities is Joe Don Moorfield. And then we have... Uh, a happy birthday this month as well. Tammy, you have anything anything else you need to bring up? Okay. Tim, you you all good? I'm good. Johnny? Good. Tim? Good. good. Manager Ross, you have anything? I'd just like to take the opportunity to thank the council um, for uh, their uh, constant communication and, and treatment of me uh, and, and I think I'll call it the, the nurturing of our relationship over the past several months. Um, I commend you. You've been a pleasure to work with, uh, and uh, it's, it's been it's been perfectly enjoyable. So uh, thank you very much. I'd also like to thank uh, Carolyn James. She's present here. She's she served as a constant liaison uh, to the, the LMPOA, the Loudoun Merchants and Property Owners Association. We've got uh, a lot of good things uh, cooking. Uh, a lot of a lot of good ideas, um, namely uh, the addition of the historic uh, Loudon emblem, same as on the water tower, to the attraction signage on. Uh, Interstate I-75. Um, you did uh, amend your budget for uh, courthouse square dollars to go, go towards possible lighting projects. We're looking specifically at the existing lamps downtown and, and changing them over to, to LED. There's 75 plus of those and we'll put those numbers together and bring them back to you uh, for your approval. And there's ongoing discussions of parking downtown and the improvement of parking downtown. Um, whether it be the, the empty lot we're looking at or just uh, uh, cleaning up the existing lot uh, that's behind TikTok. So, thank you. Great. Thank you, Manager Ross. Attorney Fry, you have anything you need? Uh, no, we'll just, we'll head to executive session here in a moment and there will not be any action after that. Okay. All right. Megan, you good? You get any questions? Thank you. Get all your notes. Okay, we'll adjourn this meeting. We'll go into executive session and we'll reconvene at 7 for you. This video presentation is made possible by Brewster Services Group.